Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you another three node groups that I created that are called cast to sphere, cast to cuboid and cast to cylinder and you probably kind of know already from the thumbnail it's just the cast modifier that we have here. Cast modifier. It works the same way and I'm going to show you a bit of uh, differences that we have here in my opinion uh, mine kind of uh, without false modesty uh, work even better than the original modifier uh, but let's go into it in a second first I want to tell you that you can download this group of nodes from the link in the description it's a perfect way to support this channel but you can stay until the end of the video and I'm going to show you the principles behind how I created these nodes so let me show you first how these work and we're going to do that by comparing it to the original cast modifier so let's just look at for example this sphere if we just turn off my geometry node here and let's just uh, create this one sphere okay and as you can see uh, here we have a factor that if we set it to one and maybe lower this radius a bit and let me see better you'll see that that the original shape gets transformed closer and closer to a sphere and the problem with this original modifier is that it works uh, kind of weird for example if you lower this radius at one point this is gonna happen so all the rest uh, of the geometry that's outside of that uh, sphere uh, will stay unchanged and sometimes you want to collapse it uh, down so mm, I don't know why they chose to do this so we need to have a bigger radius so this is already uh, an issue that I don't like uh, personally that much and then another thing that we have is for example if we so now I'm in edit mode and if I move this object somewhere uh, far and away from the center of our origin point then this kind of behavior happens and this is also not very useful right even now even if we make it bigger uh, it, it kind of projects onto a sphere and it, it doesn't take the shape of the sphere when maybe i would want it to do that uh, but anyway so let's leave this original cast modifier and let's use mine uh, let's begin with this one the cast sphere as you can see from my original mesh with the factor of 0 to 1 I just go into that sphere and the cool thing about this is that this sphere can be moved any way we want it this is the movement that we can use and it can be as big as we want it as you can see it still works it still goes back to that same original geometry using this factor here and uh, and as the original one we have these uh, lock options that I, I don't know exactly why would we want these but since the original one has uh, why don't we just put them there also and we also have this selection which is also probably not that useful but let's just show you how that works for example if we want to select only the mm, z values that are greater than zero we can use that so let's plug this into selection and now only the ones that are over are getting shaped well this is weird you know but in some other cases that would be working in a different and more acceptable way but this is just to show that it works as it should okay and then let's go back to the cast cuboid it's the same same identical principle so we can move it where we want it we can set the size and we can lock some of the axes or not and we can still use the selection like this and the factor will still work flawlessly of course uh, the more geometry you have the better shape uh, your final product 
will get. So here I have like this simple subdivision that adds a lot of geometry. So if I have more subdivisions, then it will get uh, more precise and stuff like that. But anyway, it should work either way, depending on the way uh, your geometry looks from the beginning. Obviously, this kind of geometry is not very I don't know, practical to cast to a sphere or to anything. Uh, but uh, this is just an example to show you that it works with the weirdest of shapes. Okay, so let's let's move to the last one, the cylinder. The same thing. So here you can uh, change the cylinder height, the cylinder radius, and even the cylinder resolution. So you can even have like an uh, prism or something like that and and again the factor controls this change of shape okay and uh, everything else I've already shown you it works uh, the same way all three of them and let's just do the uh, very quick review of the nodes inside that were used to create this kind of behavior on these three group nodes and let's begin with the sphere and let's go back into let's set it to one and let's go here okay so uh what we got here uh, we practically only have one single set position node so what happens from the start where we have this geometry we just want to put it in the center with this vector uh, with this center origin and this is the setup of that so what are we doing practically here we are just using our whole geometry and then we are uh, searching for the center of gravity and we're going to place it in the center of our object where our origin point is so here so here it's where it's starting from and here it's where it's going uh, and we are also capturing this vector movement so the movement that we used from uh, this position to this position is getting uh, recorded and stored here so we're going to use it later to bring back that geometry away but we needed it in the center because uh, uh, the sphere is going to have a center here also and then uh, every position here every position of this vertices of all vertices is stored here and then uh, we are subtracting that position so if for example this is one position we are subtracting from zero 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 which is actually this point here so we are actually getting this vector and for all the vertices we are capturing that vector and then the only th the, what we're doing we are normalizing that vector normalizing it means that we are uh, setting the, the we are practically creating a vector in the same direction but with the length of one so we are all getting these kind of vectors around from this it's only one so here and you kind of guessed it already so all these vectors from all these points around are getting scaled to the length of one so that we can create like a sphere around that center of one meter radius and that's what happens and and then we are using let's leave this away for a second imagine that this is connected to this then we are using this mix color where we, we are mixing the original position of all the vertices before this vector movement and the new position that is scaled that uh, one radius is getting scaled here by the sphere radius so if we want the sphere to be two meters uh, this is where we're going to scale that one meter vector length to the whatever length we want our sphere radius to be and, and we are using the factor from 0 to 1 to switch between the original position and the new position. And we are just placing the position here. 
and this is the result um, and here again what is this here this one it only locks based on these z-axis y-axis and x-axis checkboxes if we want this transformation to happen or not and we're practically switching between this vector and this vector that is the original position of the vector so we're practically leaving unchanged uh, some coordinates of our choosing and the last thing that we need to do is to set position back using this scale minus vector so this vector movement that we used to move away from here to here now we just need to bring it back and that's it so this is the sphere and the next one is cuboid it's a bit different but not that different because the sphere is simple because all the vertices of a sphere are all equidistant from a center but here it's not that complicated also we're just gonna need to go in and see what happens so here we have a, a bunch more attributes but now we are not using a sphere we're using a bounding box so again we went to the center of mass here and then we created a bounding box around that and now we want to create a cube around this that is all the same size so we need to transform it a bit bigger than this box is so then we don't get some overlapping so we just transformed it to uh, twice the size not that important and then we are capturing the size of that bounding box this is a simple node group that just captures the coordinates uh, of the existing geometry and then it returns the sizes in all three axes so that I can combine all this uh, math to this transform node to have a cube off cube off 10 meters by 10 meters by 10 meters and and then I'm using this cube that is around my original shape right from here my shape is here and my 10 by 10 by 10 is around that shape and then I'm using this cube as my target geometry and I'm using my uh, ray direction as the position of vector so this is all th th this position actually it is coordinates of our uh, vertices but more than that it's just uh, it's, it's a vector it's a vector that points from zero 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 to that position so I'm using all these vectors as my ray directions in my ray cast node and and I'm using my uh, original geometry to set the position wherever that ray hits my cube so all these vertices are throwing themselves away in the direction of the vector position and if they're hitting the cube that's where they'll mark their position and that's what happens here actually and and that is practically it and now the only thing you need to do is uh, set the position of the cube so we know that the cube was 10 by 10 by 10 so we need to do some math to get it uh, to exactly where we want to get the size of the cube cube size travels all the way all the way here and then it gets multiplied by that z size the one divided by that z size of this 10 by 10 by 10 so that we can use that scale to get the position of the cube that we would like so that if we change it here cube size this one grows or shrinks and then again 
this is the set position node that let me just check what this one does. ah this is the vector movement so if we moved it into the center from here to here we are capturing that vector movement and now we just bringing it back to where it needs to go and then we got another set position here and this one offsets if we have the position of the if we have the position of the cube uh, somewhere else so not at zero 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 so if we move it somewhere away from here then that one is going to do what needs to be done here and that is practically it the next one is that mix between the original position and the new position and with that same setup we saw uh, with the cast uh, sphere node that here we just lock some of the axes and that is practically it so thank you so much for watching guys uh, I don't want to go uh, into this one here also uh, because this one is practically the same we're just using uh, the, the cylinder as our ray cast uh, target instead of a cube but the principles are identical so we don't want to go into that I think this is enough uh, thank you so much for watching remember you can download these nodes uh, it's a perfect way to support this channel and I will see you in the next video thank you so much and bye bye